good morning officers today i will be submitting my ca assignment and presenting it my assignment is problem number 3 and it is the modeling and analysis of a crane hook or lifting hook i'll be using ansys mechanical or ansys static structural analysis and i'll be designing using the ansys design model so let's proceed first i'll go to the engineering data and i will edit it we know that most crane hooks are made up of low alloy steel so i'll be searching up that material in engineering data in engineering <coughs> ansys general material granata material and what we do this is the low alloy steel so i'll be adding it and let's change the color and then i'll be closing this window now i'll go to geometry and i'll open in design model Let's go to the ZX plane. First, let me go to the units and make it into centimeter. Then let's go to the ZX plane and look at this. Now let's start sketching. I'll be drawing a circle. Let me give the dimension, the diameter. and the distance from the horizontal axis so let the <coughs> diameter be 15 cm and the distance from the horizontal axis be 25 cm now let's go back and add another sketch in the next sketch we'll do the same we'll do a circle Let's give the dimension, and let's give the distance from the horizontal axis. So the dimensions will also be same. The diameter will be fifteen centimeter, and the distance from the horizontal axis will be twenty-five centimeter. So our first sketch is done. The first sketch in the axis is done. Now, I'll go to the X Y plane. I'll again look into it. I will then make a sketch. Let me draw a circle with this center. Now I'll give the dimensions. <laughs> the diameter of my circle will be 50 cm now i'll go to the modify button and i will be trim i will be trimming the upper portion of the circle we can see we have the only the lower portion of the circle left this will be my path for sweeping <clears throat> now let's go and create another sketch and i'll be drawing another circle from the same center and i'll be drawing a line from the same center. vertical line i'll be <coughs> giving the dimensions as the diameter It will be the same as the earlier one, fifty centimeter, and then the diameter of the uh, distance of the line from the axis. Let that be forty-five centimeter. So now I will go to the modify option. I'll go to the trim option, and let me trim 
three fourths of the circle. One, two, three. And let me use the fillet option and filleting around twenty centimeter. Keeping the fillet radius is twenty centimeter. I will be filleting using this. So my initial sketching is done. I can go and check my sketch. So now I'll be creating this 2D model and converting this 2D model into 3D model. So let me use the sweep button first. So in the sweep button, first I'll use the profile. So my first profile will be sketch 2. I'll apply it and my path first path will be sketch 4. It. Let me generate it and we can see that a 3D model has been generated. Similarly, we will use the sweep button again. <coughs> we will be using sketch 1 as a profile and sketch 3 as a path and I will generate it. <coughs> as we can see, the basic design of the it is done. Let's make it a little bit more realistic. <coughs> First, I'll go to the chamfer and using the chamfer, I'll change my selection filter into edges. I'll be using this edge and apply. I'll using I'll be using FD1 as 3 and FD2 as around 10 centimeters. Generate. and we can see it has been generated now let's make it a bit pointed let me use this face as my new plane let me click generate you can see the plane has been formed let's look at it now inside this plane let us sketch this is, my, this is my new plane. I'll sketch here. So, this is my next sketch. Let me go to the sketch. Let me draw another circle. Keeping this as center. Let me draw a circle. Now, dimensions. Let me keep this around 9 cm. In my sketch <clears throat> now I will chamfer it again now now I will extrude this part a little bit so I'll be using extrude I'll be apply and let's say Is around five centimeter and let me generate so you can see that it has been generated now let's use the chamfer button chamfer tool again using the chamfer tool again we can see that um, we'll use it in you will use again the edge button and this will be my edge i'll apply it again so fd keeping fd1 as three and fd as around 10 again we can generate it let me change the chamfer one at around 12.5 generate it and this again let me press the generate button
as you can see we have created a pointed tip <clears throat> now let's use this face too and go back here and let me create another plane generate this is my plane file let me look into it now under this plane let me make another two sketches sketch six let me sketch third one keeping this as center let me go to the dimension and let me change the diameter and let b be 20 cm let me sketch it again let this be sketch seven let me draw another circle again let me use the dimension button and change the diameter <coughs> let that be 17.5 now using the extrude button again let me apply let me change the depth to 15 cm and click click generate we can see the upper portion has been generated now again using the extrude button i will extrude the sketch seven apply and let me give it as 5 cm the depth and let me generate it hence we can see the modeling portion of the hook is done you can look into the solid plane so the hooks modeling portion is done let us now move into the meshing and the model ansys model part where we will analyze it using boundary conditions and then we will find out the solutions So the first and foremost important thing is going to the unit and checking if the unit is in the required or desired unit that we are trying to work with. So I can see it's in meter, so it's okay. Now let's go to the geometry. It's okay. Now material assignment is an important thing. So first I'll go to the geometry and I'll change this for it from circular steel to low alloy steel. So it is done. Now meshing. Let me go to the sizing and let me increase the resolution to five. And let me generate the mesh. Take some time to generate the mesh. You can see the mesh has been created. So now we can check is if the mesh is okay. So let's go to the aspect ratio, and we can see that. all the aspect ratios are higher than one so it's a quite good mesh we can also take it by going to the jacobian ratio and we can see everything is less than one maximum is one so 
to get this result. So now let's go to the static structure and give the boundary condition. The first boundary condition will be the fixed support. It will be applied here on this face. Let me apply it. Next boundary condition will be force or load. So what we are gonna uh, what we are gonna do is that mostly most of the times the train hook or lifting hook is subjected to weights of about 500 kg and more. So I'll be using 500 kg as my reference force. So multiplying 500 with um, 19.8 meter per second square, we get 4900 newton. So 4900 newton will be my force, and it will be in the negative y direction since this is my axis. So you can see that it will be applied here in the negative x direction. So let's apply it in this geometry. Let's apply it and change it from vector to components. And in the y, let me give it as 49 minus 49. And you can see that it is acting in this direction. Now let's go to the solution function and let's insert deformation total, deformation directional. Here x axis deformation, so I can rename it x. Again, I can insert deformation directional and change into y axis and rename it. Can also find out the strain equivalent one mesh strain and the normal strain. I can also find out the stresses equivalent one mesh stresses, the maximum principal stress as well as the <coughs> normal stress. And let me <clears throat> so we can look for the total deformation. We can animate it and look at it. We can check the directional deformation x axis, directional deformation in the y axis, equivalent elastic strain, normal elastic strain. So let's do something new. Let's go to the geometry. Let's see. Let's add a construction geometry that is a path and let my y coordinate. And let this be.
So we have created a path from one to two. We'll check the deformation as well as stresses developed between these two points. So let me go to the solution. Let me insert stress and let me get equivalent stress. And from the geometry selection, let me change it to path and my path. This is my path. And let me evaluate all results. And we can see how from as it changes from one to two, how the stress is increasing. The maximum stress occurs at here in the point two. In our path, the maximum stress here are the values of the stress in PA Pascal. We can also find out the deformation, the total deformation. Again, going in the scoping method, changing it from general solution to path. We are adding the path. And let me evaluate all these ones. And we can see the deform direct total deformation occurring in the path. So this is my analysis of the crane hook system, modeling and analysis of the crane hook system. And Thanks to this course, I have learned a new thing. I have learned how to model and I have learned how to analyze it. And my SOLIDWORKS is currently not working. It's a crack version and there are certain problems. So I have to manage, I have to model in NC Design Modeler. That modeling might, might not seem a bit nice, but at least it, has, it can give us a detail about the analysis. I would like to thank Dr. Manas Patim and Dr. Susan Kurtania sir, to, for giving me the opportunity to present my analysis and with this I would like to conclude my presentation. Thanks.